Hi guys, so today we are doing a comedy showcase. And before we get started, I just need to teach you one very important rule, which is the taxi rule. And oh. oh! Guys, just let me introduce the rule first. Okay, so the taxi rule is... Um, no! Yo! <clears throat> the... So, when I say the T word, you what's the t word taxi yo ha ha all right so you guys will say taxi yo whenever yo. i say yo so let's no, no, no. you say taxi we say yo oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so when i say taxi you say yo yo taxi. Yo. 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 Taxi. yo 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 no oh. All right, so this rule will be used whenever we want to close out a scene or any game that we're playing. So to start us off, we're going to play a game of World's Worst. So everyone show their video. And for this game, we have the world's best improvisers that are going to just do the world's worst job. So let's say you had, I don't know, a nurse. They would do the world's worst nurse. All right, so the first job... We will choose surgeon. So, world's worst thing to see, say, or do as a surgeon. Um, let's see. This heart. Let's see. Uh, it's perfect for my collection. Oh, uh, see this. These lungs. You got to polish them off first. Take those too. Oh, and whenever you're done with a joke, I will say. Bzz. Okay. And scalpel. <laughs> well, I just finished my Chinese food, and hey, these utensils look handy. Better not waste some money. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz. <laughs> oh. I'm going to steal your heart. I'm sorry, but I have to give this to my girlfriend. Oh, man. I didn't have breakfast. I mean, I have some cereal, but I don't have a bowl. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ha ha ha, I will take your heart, and now our hearts beat as one. <laughs> hey, 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 guys, I can't find any scalpels. Oh, all right, I'll just use a spoon. This is going to get messy. <laughs> okay, so I'll just take your brain. <laughs> oh, I'm super smart. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> To switch it up. Oh man, I promised my little sister that I would get her watercolors. I mean, you don't need all that blood, do you? Bzz. Oh my god, look at all these veins. This is like Bamonte's in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I need to know from Dr. Pimple Popper on TLC. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get a new occupation. Um, how about a zookeeper? Well, zoo for sale, zoo for sale. I'm not keeping this. <laughs> <laughs> so we, next time if Zion doesn't do trick Zion will go bye bye <laughs> so, I think it's wrong to keep tigers in cages oh, get them off me get them off me you belong in a cage foul fiend <laughs> 
Well, here in communist zoo, we let all animals be together as equal. Uh oh. Where did all the zebras go? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my! Wait, so you're telling me the animals were supposed to be in separate cages? <laughs> well, I think the zebra exhibit is canceled. We don't have a child exhibit yet. Hello, little boy. <laughs> Twilight Zone episode. Well, Mom, you don't support anything I do just because all my pets growing up died, like of weird, mysterious reasons. What do you mean I can't be a zookeeper? <laughs> Fido was your fault, anyway. <laughs> all right. Um, let's get one more occupation. Um. How about, oh, dog trainer, that's a good one. I will train you all to be my evil furry henchmen. <laughs> um, I'm actually more of a cat person, so. Yeah. Okay, everybody, when you're working in this factory, you need to work like a team. We're going to train you up right. All right. Next week, we'll train you how to do McDonald's. <laughs> oh, okay, peasants, do a triple backflip. <laughs> you're just going to leave the dog here? I guess I don't want it. <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to be a better deity. Oh, dog trainer. Sorry, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> All right. Um, let's get sort of like a reason to celebrate. How about um, running a marathon? <laughs> That's a reason to celebrate. You want me to run a marathon? Have you looked at these nails? I'm not ruining that. <laughs> yeah, well. We are gathered here today to remember the life of Walt Fraser, who was foolish enough to try to run a marathon. God bless his soul. <laughs> dark? That was dark. <laughs> well, first thing to hear is you do while running a marathon or celebrating a marathon. Yeah, well. Woo! I just ran back from the general store here on Marathon Island in the Florida Keys. Woo, that was some run. It was at least two blocks. Marathon Island, Florida Keys. I finally finished the marathon. Water. Donuts. Get, get up, get up. Get up. I don't care if you're an old woman. Get up out of the real chair. I needed more. I just ran a marathon. <laughs> oh, oh, I can blend in now. I, I, can, I finally found all the escaped convicts. They're clearly running away from the pris prison. I'll join them. <laughs> yeah, well... But mind me, just keep the streets closed for another three weeks. We're still in quarantine in November, right? Oh, we'll miss it. <laughs> one more, one more big one. Oh, I know I'm gonna win first place, so I'm just gonna keep these scissors handy while I run so I can cut the ribbon. Taxi! Yeah! Kids. All right. All right. So, for our first stand up comedian of the day, it, it's normal. Woo! People go stir crazy in different ways. They pace, they lift a crazy amount of weight. 
They ride through the park on a bicycle, screaming, uh-oh. Well, now you're thinking, narwhal. When did you see that? Well, I didn't see it. I was it. And now you're thinking, narwhal. How can I do this too? Well, you're in luck. Today we're going to learn the basics of riding through the park on a bicycle, screaming, uh-oh. I'll start with an easy part, keeping the ball on your head. Now you're thinking, wait, narwhal, that's a hard part. But it's made easy thanks to one little thing, super glue. <laughs> well, now you're thinking, wouldn't that tear out your hair? Why do you think half of my head is shaved? <laughs> Some things are more important than you may think. Like screaming, uh-oh. I've tried many different things. I tried, but that attracted too many whales. <laughs> I, I tried meh, but that was way too boring. And then finally, I chose uh-oh. It was perfect because it implied that I could fall at any given moment. So people got out of the way, but still watched. Well, that's the basics. Enjoy quarantine and enjoy your new hobby slash way of life. <laughs> Woo! All right, so next to the digital stage, it's Shep. Woo! I thought we were doing objections first. Oh, we are? Oh, yeah, right. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So we are actually not going to do stand-up now. We're going to play a game called Objections. And for this game, we are no longer in our houses. We are no longer in our rooms. We are in a virtual courtroom. And we are going to be debating a topic, a topic that is an age-old argument. And behind the scenes, we've chosen Apple versus Android. So, who wants to begin? All right, Shep, you can begin. Well, the first thing that throws me off is that is that is the name Android. That it makes me think that like the phone is an Android. So, like in the future, it's gonna activate and kill us all. Yes, normal. Yeah, but Apple. You may be confused that it's an apple. So what if you try to eat it? Objection. Yes, yeah, sure. Oh, uh, the apple actually represents something with a uh, gay culture because the creator of apple is gay. That's why it has like a bite taken out of it. I forgot the meaning of it. And so basically, the meaning behind apple is more than anybody really knows. Like, what's even the meaning behind Android? An Android, like Objection. a robot. You get it. It's like. Objection. You said that it's beyond the meaning that anyone knows, but you seem to have just given a meaning for what it means. So, technically, you're wrong in saying that there is no meaning. There probably is no Objection. Meaning. You know, uh, no meaning is a meaning. Having lack of meaning, nothing is something, you know, and sometimes something is nothing. I recall back to my, oh, go ahead. Yes, Norwell. I'm still spotlighted. What's up with that? Oh, but I got you on gallery view, so uh, it's okay. Objection. You know, when you when you can be on spot, you can be spotlighted, but if you're on gallery view, Objection. you can see everybody. Uh, yes, Chef. Uh, what if um, you're on Google Meets? That way you actually have to be on spotlight view. See, Google Meets doesn't give you the option unless you download an app, so you have to be basically be on spotlight view, and that can be hard for some people. Objection. It's not that hard to download an app. You just have to go to the store, search it in, and click. Objection! If you have an Android op an Android phone, it is because they are horrible, and Apple is far superior because one, apples are delicious, and Androids are not delicious. Yeah, I object. Uh, not only do I like to use Androids, I don't like to eat apples. I mean, healthy food. I'm in quarantine. I'm going to eat a lot of junk right now. I mean, I need comfort food. Okay. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Objection! The doctors cannot come to our houses, even if they wanted to, because they're too busy. Objection! A doctor has never came to my house before. Objection! Starwalk. When did that 
ever even happen. Objection, just now when Carol, Carolyn said it. Objection, she can will doctors with her mind to come to houses. Well, back in, objection, back in my day, um, house calls were already out of style because I'm not that old, you know, but I hear way back when, the little house in the prairie times, doctors came to you. You never went to the doctor's office. It was exhausting. You imagine the doctor had to go to everybody's house. I hope they at least tip the guy, you know what I mean? You can make a house calls. It's like a pizza guy, you know? But that's, so a pizza delivery now is the equivalent of a doctor's visit from 100 some years ago, which makes me really nervous about having a doctor 100 years ago. But the pizza was not that good either, so. Objection. Yeah. Now you're just rambling. Good point. Objection. It's not bad to ramble. I mean, especially if it's interesting, because sometimes, like, interesting things will be said. Yes, Norwell. He was just rambling on and on about out pizzas and doctors, and I wasn't understanding what he was Objection. talking about. Objection. I really don't think pizzas are bad thing to talk about. Pizzas are amazing. So are doctors. Doctors are amazing. If you put them both together, you get a... a Pizza, which is a doctor. Objection. I'm sorry. I haven't had a pizza delivery or a New York slice of pizza in eight weeks as a fear for coronavirus. And I think all this talk about pizza, and it's my own fault for bringing it up, I know, but all this talk about pizza is making me sad and hungry at the same time, which is going to make me emotionally eat and gain more weight, which is bad for my health. It's already bad enough I'm not eating apples. And I will just ramble and babble till somebody objects to me or calls taxi. Oh, yes, go ahead, Norwell. I'm wearing a shirt that has the sloth riding a narwhal holding an American flag. Taxi! Who can argue with that? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> now you can bring up Chip. All right. So, next to the virtual stage is Chip. Woo! Woo! Okay. So, I have two grandpas, and they're both different one's a cheapskate and i hate to quote chandler here but could my other grandpa be more white trash <laughs> like you know it's like it's it's overdone when you know you have lawn furniture in your living room with a beach umbrella for no reason like a duck a chicken and um thing a beer and a german shepherd like that's just over the top but see with my my cheapskate grandpa i'd say like a year ago maybe two years ago he promised me that, like, that day we would go get ice cream. And I was like, okay, let's go to the uh, ice cream parlor, like, right next door. But he had to cash a check for, like, you know, I don't know how much, like, $3. Because his friend, like, owed him a co he He bought his friend a cup of coffee. So he had to go, ca of course, cash in that $3 on that day. And so we go all the way uptown to cash in the check. And I didn't get my ice cream that day. But, like... I don't know if this is a good time to ask him for it, but like, what if I like just call him up and he could like Venmo me the money or something? So I could get an ice cream because he could is seamless or DoorDash, Uber Eats to just order me an ice cream. Because I I honestly think I deserve it, but it's I might be too over the line, and that's all my time. And all right. So the next game we are going to Oh, Shep's going to introduce you for stand up. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Next up for stand up is Carolyn. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, we've been spending quite a lot of time in quarantine now. I think it's been about 2 years and I've sort of noticed like I've been spending a lot more time with my family. But I don't really think that that's such a good thing because we're like, we're, we're playing this game called Wii Tennis and it's fun. Like it's a nice way to relieve stress, but sometimes my dad will relieve a little bit more than stress because whenever we play, like he farts like a lot. Okay. And like, oh my, they're noxious. Okay. Like I'm getting like nauseous even like thinking about it I'm like I can't tell you how many times I've had to play with my nose held or like physically left the room or like made this face like I was just told that I had to have broccoli for dinner and I mean 
I mean, like, he always talks about how he's going to, like, gas out his opponents, but I'm normally the closest one to him since we're, since we're on the same team. So it's kind of backfiring. And if you just combine that with my mom's burps, who croaks like a frog, I think our house is just going to, like, combust because we haven't opened a door or a window in so long that I just don't think our poor little house can take it. And our our teachers have decided, uh, so we have like, so we had spring break a while ago and it was fun, we were relaxing. And then um, we, fig- we realized that we'd have to be in quarantine and our teachers were really sympathetic. They wanted to make sure that we were not too stressed out during this trying time. So they created online school where we could still do work. And that was honestly, like, one of the worst decisions because, I mean, like, the workload they gave is insane. Like, I had to do, like, this huge English project. Like, I was cutting and pasting and crafting my diorama for days. And normally, you take it to school in a trash bag. The teachers would be like, oh, my God, Carolyn, A++ star heart happy face. And then my classmates would be like, oh, my God, you're so talented. And I'd be like, thank you so much. I'll leave it here on display. But now, you make it, take a couple pictures of it, and then throw it away in their cycling. So basically, all my hard work just goes into the garbage now, which is so fun. Totally worth it. <laughs> and, like, I I understand why they'd want us to do online school, but, I mean, the teachers, like, they seem, like, really upset. And I feel like, I don't know, like, some of them, like, I just don't like. So having to, like, see them at home is annoying. So whenever we get a substitute teacher the wave of relief that washes over us. And, like, even when we were back at school, like, we would just be like, oh, we would, like, audibly sigh out loud. And, like, it was so fun to, like, I don't know, because, like, your classmates would, like, be, like, more happy than usual. And you'd be like, and then you'd immediately know we have a sub. And then just to make sure you like peek in the window and you see out of the corner of your eye, then it's a different person. And even to the people that were totally oblivious, you'd just be like, we can be lazy more than usual. (laughs) Then you just sort of like start doing a little dance to yourself. And I mean, if you're like doing like a language class, like French, and the teacher doesn't speak French, you just have like an excuse to like just do nothing except watch PewDiePie during the whole entire class. And I mean, you can just be like, well, I mean, I didn't know what to do during this part. And then all the other parts of the homework, I was totally confused, so I couldn't do it anyway. And I mean, it's a pretty good excuse. I've tried it, it works. But sometimes my mom isn't too happy that I'm not doing my work because like, I don't know, she just, like, she just gives me, like, way too much feedback on my stuff, and, like, even when it's, like, it's not, like, academic, like, I was doing, like, um, acting for the middle school play that we're doing, um, we're doing Shakespeare, and I was, like, acting over the camera, and my mom, she thought I was doing super well, I was just, like, acting, doing super well, until I got one note from the teacher, and she, whenever, whenever I get feedback, she always wishes that she said it herself. So, like, I'll just, yeah. uh, so the teacher will, like, give me a note. And I'll be like, okay. And then she'll just, in the corner, she'll just be like, oh, why didn't you do that? Oh, I knew you should have done Ah, oh, come on, Carolyn. That was, like, five seconds ago. You were fine. And, like, I think it's just because it was brought to her attention Well, maybe she doesn't believe it, and she just wants me to suffer. Probably the latter. Um, And, like, there was this one time, like, when I was also acting and I got her note, she physically hit her forehead with her phone and gave out, like, a loud sigh, like, Like, and I was mute at the time. I'm pretty sure you could hear her through the mute. Like, she was just... 
being so obnoxious and I just have to sit there like, mm-hmm, totally listening to what the teacher is saying and just like, mm-hmm, you can stop. But she doesn't because she doesn't listen to me. And sometimes like my mom will call me in during dinner and like she'll say, dinner's ready. But then I just end up sitting there for a minute. That's not really a joke. That's just a little thing that I don't really like. And, <laughs> and I was I was cleaning up my closet the other day, and I I actually found this shirt, and I realized I think I found a lot more clothes than I had before because I was trying to get rid of stuff, but now I think I have more than I did because I just sort of like discovered this new stuff that I didn't realize that I had. Which is cool, but I mean, it's probably too small now. So, oh well. And um, I, during quarantine, I've sort of been eating a lot. And I know that that's like, I don't know, I feel like that's just like a sort of thing that I'm just doing because honestly, like my, my mom got cereal the other day and like I thought I'd grown out of cereal. But I guess I didn't because this morning I ate like a oh, entire like bowl like filled to the brim. I think it like overflowed at one point. But like I mean I'm just like down the whole thing. Like I mean honestly I was just bored. There's nothing else to do except this class, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> and I like eating is like great for my procrastination as well because like I refuse to do anything while I'm eating, okay? I am just completely off limits, done, don't talk to me, have my headphones on, watching YouTube, won't do anything else. Like, my mom is like, come on, you need to do your homework. I'm like, I can't, I'm eating. He's <laughs> like, you need to clean your room. And I'm like, I can't, I'm eating. She's like, the house is burning down. And I'm like, I can't move, I'm eating. And I mean, honestly, that's probably gonna backfire one day. Especially because, like, I don't know, it takes a long time for food to get into the house, or at least to get into the fridge, because my mom is so paranoid that she washes everything that comes into the house, okay? Like, she'll wash guacamole, like, she'll, like, I don't know, she'll wash, like, the physical chip bag, and we just have to, like, hope that it doesn't, like, pop. And then we just get like soggy chips or something. And like I heard one time that she took the she took cheese out of the wrapper and then cut off a thin layer of what was touching the plastic so that we wouldn't eat it. And I just cannot like that's worse than like my OCD, okay? <laughs> like I don't even know what was happening there. And honestly, like and like food is also like food is also like disappearing really fast because like let's say like we get ice cream every Friday. So like I have a bowl, then my brother has a bowl, my mom has like a mug full. And then like my dad, he doesn't usually have any. And then maybe I have another bowl the next day and maybe my brother has a little bit too. My mom definitely has some. My dad still doesn't have any. And then I don't have any Sunday. And then by the time Monday rolls around, all the ice cream is gone. And we've had about like two thirds of, no, no, we've had like one fourth, we've had like one fourth of it and it's all gone. And we immediately know that it's my mom because we like question everybody. Like my brother goes around, he's like, did you have some? And I'm like, yeah, I had a bowl. And he's like, I had a bowl. Dad didn't have any. And he's like, mom, how did you eat all that? And she's like, <laughs> it melted. I don't know. It. I think it walked away. And honestly, like, oh my God. Like we know she's lying, but I mean, there's nothing we can really do about it because she stays up late every night, like at one, like till one o'clock, which is like, like because she's, she says she's trying to get um, the new grocery orders that open at that time. But I think that she's doing other things. Like, I mean, like she says she's staying up to get groceries, but is she though? I feel like, I don't know, she's definitely raiding the fringe. Like she's probably watching TV. I don't know, she's probably planning world domination for all I know. And I mean, 
honestly, like, honestly, I feel like she's gotten pretty close considering all the night she's stayed up. So thank you. I will be here all night and all day because we can't leave. So me. <laughs> Let's bring it home with a with one more game. All right, so for this game, we will be doing hitchhiking emotions, which is basically, um, oh wait, actually, so we don't promote hitchhiking, it's carpool emotions. So basically, we are going to each have an emotion, and we're in a car, or virtual car, and Every time, and we're going to just be acting as our emotion. And every time a person comes into a car, everyone takes on that emotion. And okay, now I'm going to assign all of them. And all right, so I think, um, sorry. Um, all right, so I think I will be disgusted. Um, Shep, what do you want to make? Uh, I think I'll be confused. All right. Uh, Narwhal, what about you? Uh, annoyed. All right. Well? Uh, I was told I should be hyper allergic to everything. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So who wants to be the driver? Well, actually, no. First, we need to establish where we're going. So where's a good place that we should go? Um, anyone? Huh? Somewhere over the rainbow. Yeah. All right. We're going to be, um, we will be going to driving to quarantine. And, um, and then we also need a car. So let's just choose some basic car. Let's choose a limousine. All right. So who wants to be the driver? Normal, you'll be the driver. Then Shep, then I'll go, then Walt, you can go. Sounds good to me. I hate driving. Why is there a bird outside my window? That's so distracting. <laughs> um, get off the road, weirdo. What on earth is on my seat? That was not my fault. Come in. Come in. Shop, you're on mute. Shop, you're on mute. First off, um, what's that? What, who are you? What's that? What's that? What's a cactus? Wait a minute. Why? How do like, I? Like, cats or dogs? What? What am? Huh? What are we in? What's your favorite color? What was your favorite year and month growing up? I, how do I? Hmm? Who are you? Why were you hit? I gotta ask you that question. Sorry. Hmm? 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 Why is your car red? That's an unnatural color. Why is hair? Wait, hair. Why is hair dead skin? Come in. Oh my god! I totally chipped a nail just closing that door. Ew. Uh, I'm gagging. Oh, I'm pretty sure that I scratched this car. You know, thing. Ew, leather seats? Oh my god. Oh my god, I think there's something on the steering wheel. It better not be gum, like, I cannot. I swear to god. Hi guys, uh, I think oh. I need to go to quarantine. I got this ra <laughs> ah, rash. Oh no, I think I'm allergic to this. <laughs> Oh no, are these leather seats? Oh. Oh, they are leather. I 
everybody is everybody has a bird in there? Oh, no. Stop working. Is there oxygen in this car? I gotta go. There's oxygen in this car. I'm allergic to it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. That was like. Oh Could you horrible. close your mouth when you breathe? Like, gosh. Like, mouth breather much? Thanks, so. Excuse me. How dare you? Yeah, like I can't even handle your attitude. Like your like your attitude is being like yeah, yeah, disgusting really? right now. Yeah. So like I'm leaving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's best that you dip right now. Okay? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What was what was that just now? Why why did we just huh? Why did our personalities just change? I'm what the heck? What's why wrong? is American television better than Australian television? Why is I, I'm just too confused right now. Could you pull over and just let me out, please? Get out. Okay. Wait, where are we? Okay. I can't believe they all left. I mean, that's terrible. I, I mean, how could they do that? Hey, there's quarantine. <laughs> Taxi! Go! Oh. All right. Give it up one last time for your cast today, ladies and gentlemen. Norwal, Shep, my name's Walter, and give it up for your host, Carolyn. Where we have comedy classes for kids and teens, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be here every Sunday at 11 doing their show. We're not doing it live to give it a chance for kids to play, but we'll put them up online. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Everybody wave goodbye one last time.